without a realtor. After all, it's a seller's market. How hard can it be, right? Eh, wrong. I'll give it to you right here in the very beginning. The number one reason you do not want to sell your home for sale without a realtor is your personal liability. If something goes wrong during the transaction, you are personally liable. That means the buyer can sue you personally. Did you know that 90% of all real estate lawsuits result from someone who tried to sell their home on their own or from buyers who were unrepresented? By using a realtor, that takes the liability off of you for the most part. I'm Kat Williams, your real estate concierge. I understand how selling your home without a realtor might seem like a good idea, but there is so much that goes into selling a home. Even as an experienced agent, I have a 130 point checklist that I use to make sure everything is taken care of for my clients. The simple fact that the market is hot and it's a seller's market is just another reason why you should absolutely work with a realtor. Understanding the systems, procedures, and the art of negotiation will only add to the better experience that I can provide you. It can also net you more money at the end of the day, even after my commission. There are so many other factors that come into play when selling a house. For example, getting your home maximum exposure with the MLS and marketing. Did you know that the MLS is the place where all listings are pushed out to the other real estate websites like Redfin, Zillow, and Realtor.com? That's right, it all starts with putting your home into the MLS, which can only be done by a real estate professional. If your listing is not inputted into the MLS on the open market, how do you know if you're getting the highest and best price for your home? Marketing your home on social media is a whole other nuance in and of itself. The right way is very important. There are also things to consider when reviewing offers, earnest money, appraisal gap coverage, inspections, appraisals, and so on. What if you get a low appraisal, then what? Do you know how to appeal a low appraisal? That's something a realtor would do for you and something that happens more often than not in this market. There is so much that a realtor does behind the scenes. Remember that 130 point checklist I mentioned? Sure, you can sell your home yourself, but keep in mind, you will have to coordinate everything. Arranging for the septic inspection, working with the county, maybe to get a well inspection, doing a time of transfer document, arranging for an appraisal and scheduling the inspection, just to name a few. By the way, who's going to review the offers for you to make sure that they are legally sound and that the buyer isn't asking for anything extraordinary? I would be facilitating all of that for you. I would also help you get your house ready to go on the market, help with staging, professional photography, and so on. Not to mention the little goodies that I'll send you during the transaction. Speaking of photography, do you know how to take real estate photos? Listing photos are what sell a home. They are what get a potential buyer to come out and look at your home. Simply taking pictures of each room with your cell phone isn't good enough. I'm a professional sports photographer and even I can't catch the important nuances of real estate photography. That's why I hire a professional photographer for all of my listings and this is an expense I cover for my sellers. Oh geez. And then there is the scheduling of all the showing requests for the house and manage all of those calls and texts and emails. So right now in a seller's market, there are as many as 50 or more showings per day on the weekends. If you sell your house on your own, you have to manage and schedule all of those. Of course, you want all of them to come see your house so that you have the potential for multiple offers and the highest price but you have to respond to every single real estate agent. You have to keep a calendar to make sure there's no overlapping appointments. And if you aren't Johnny on the spot in returning texts or scheduling those appointments, your house will sit on the market longer than it should. In some cases, if a buyer has a question and you don't respond quickly enough, they're gonna move on to the next house. It's a dog eat dog world out there when you are trying to buy a home right now. And then there's the negotiations. Did you know that the highest offer is not necessarily the best offer? Do you know what would constitute a best offer? 
It's not always the net proceeds in the end. By doing me the honor of listing your home, I will manage all of the showings, answer all of the questions. I will make sure buyers are qualified, that the terms of the contract are favorable, and help you negotiate things that you may not even know are negotiable. Then, then there's the buyers who think that they don't need to offer as much for a FISBO because they know you aren't paying a commission to a realtor. Statistics show buyers are much more likely to offer a higher amount on a home that is listed with a real estate company versus a FISBO. You'll get more coverage on your listings, higher offers, and you won't have to handle anything. As your real estate concierge, that's my job. You get the white glove experience and I take care of everything. Here are a few more statistics to consider. Did you know that only 11% of FISBOs are actually successful at selling their home? And on average, the FISBO homes sell for 26% less than similar properties sold by a real estate professional? So not only are you likely to get more money in your pocket by working with a real estate professional, but you don't have to deal with the stress. It won't take up all of the time and the legal liability that's removed from your shoulders. And there are, those are some pretty good reasons to use a real estate professional. I'm curious, what are you gonna do if you get 10 offers? Remember, the highest offer isn't always the best offer. Who's going to explain the ins and outs and nuances of each offer and what makes one offer better than another? That's what a real estate professional would do for you. We know the ins and outs. We know what's good and what's not. And most importantly, we protect you from liability and we negotiate for you. Ugh, not to mention the paperwork. Most FISBO sellers do not realize how much paperwork is involved with a transaction. How much communication there is between real estate agents and the title company. Throughout the entire process, communication is crucial to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Did you know that the average real estate contract in Washington state is 25 pages? Did you know that there are at least 15 different documents in every offer? Do you know what parts of those documents are negotiable? I do. I'm a real estate professional. If you give me the honor of listing your home for sale, you would know that not only am I a professional who has sold tons of homes, but my system has proven results that when selling with me, you will likely net more money even after paying my commission. You are going to have enough to worry about when it comes to packing, finding a new place to live, possibly legal issues by selling your house on your own, not to mention compliance deadlines and required paperwork. My marketing and 130 point checklist have proven results to ensure that my clients' homes sell faster and for more money, even with my commission. I do this every day, it's what I love. As your real estate concierge, I will guide you through the process from start to finish. I have a partner agent who met the seller of a property she was helping her client buy. That seller told her that the home he purchased, a FISBO, just appraised for 100,000 more than what he paid. That's fantastic for the buyer. But the seller just lost a ton of money. Why? because the seller didn't know the true value of his home. Another partner agent shared a story where she and her husband sold a house that was FISBO before she was a realtor. She told people that they would be more than happy to pay a buyer's agent fee. But what she didn't realize at the time was that they were essentially paying a buyer's agent to negotiate against them. You may be paying the buyer's agent, but they don't represent you. So you are giving them money to try and get the cheapest and best deal for their client. Why would you do that? Wouldn't it make more sense to give me that money so that I'm representing you, negotiating for you, protecting you from liability, and keeping your best interests in the forefront of the transaction? Your home is your biggest asset and your largest investment. Do you pay someone to manage your 401k or other retirement accounts? Aren't those assets too? So why wouldn't you want to pay a real estate agent to list your home and protect your biggest asset? I am a professional. That means I have training and experience in negotiations, contracts, inspections, and appraisals. 
When you're working with a real estate professional, you are more likely to sell your home faster and for more money. I do this every day and I can guide you through the process from start to finish as your real estate concierge. I hope I've given you enough to think about here. All I ask is if you are seriously considering selling your home without a realtor, to give me a chance to show you what I will do to sell your home. My contact information is in the description of this video. There is also a link directly to my calendar and you can schedule your listing presentation today. Even if you just have questions, you can schedule an appointment to just chat. Next week, we'll, we will be talking about iBuyer programs. I'm Kat Williams, your real estate concierge. Have a blessed weekend.